To start off, we have to understand what a right-handed coordinate system is. Throughout the book and all the lessons, everything uh, we do always will be using the right-hand coordinate system. So how does that work? How do the X, Y, and Z axes, how are they uh, positioned relative to one another all the time? The right-handed coordinate system starts with your right hand, of course, and then you start counting with your thumb. One, two, three. X, Y, Z. So if you do that, one, two, three, X, Y, Z, this is always the positive X, this is always the positive Y, and this is always the positive Z. So no matter how you orient it in space, that will always be the uh, relationship between the positive X axis, the positive Y axis, and the positive Z axis. X, Y, Z. Here are three different orientations of the right-handed coordinate system. So uh, you can see in each of these three pictures, my hand is oriented in a different way, and it shows the corresponding locations of the plus X, the plus Y, and the plus Z axes. Now that we've defined our right-hand coordinate system, let's talk about how we uh, show the location of any point in space. So let's say, uh, here's my right-handed coordinate system. Here's the point in space I want to describe. So it has an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. So in this case, uh, my position vector would be, uh, the head of the vector would be located at negative 3 in the X, positive 2 in the Y, and positive 5 in the Z. And using unit vector notation, uh, our R vector, which is the vector that begins at the origin and goes to that point in space, it has an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. Remember, the I, J, K are called unit vectors. They just show direction, I indicating the X direction, J indicating the Y direction, and K indicating the Z direction. And then this X, this Y, and this Z are the magnitudes of those components. So negative three, uh, two, and five. Let's talk about displacement vectors. Displacement is a change in position. So here I described my some position in space at negative three in the X, two in the Y, and five in the uh, Z. And let's say I want to move to a new location. So here's my initial position, and I move to some other position at a later time. How much uh, has my position changed? What is my displacement? And how do I describe that with a vector? Well, my initial position was described with vector R1, which goes from the origin to that point in space. My second position will also be described by a vector that starts at the origin and goes to that second position in space. We'll call that position vector R2, and then my vector that, is, that describes my displacement that moved from the initial position to the later position is shown with this vector here, starting here and ending there. And we'll call that delta r. How much has my position vector r changed? So we can write it like this. Delta r is the difference between my final position vector and my initial position vector. And let's just double check uh, ourselves here to make sure this makes sense. Uh, remember that, let me move this. Remember that the order of vector addition is not important. And also uh, when we subtract vectors, it's like adding a negative vector. So I'm just gonna rewrite R1 as negative, uh, excuse me, the minus thing R1, I'll rewrite that as negative R1 added to R2. So let's go up here. Here's my position vector R1. It starts at the origin and goes to this point. But if I make it negative, remember that means to make it point in the opposite direction. So that means uh, I can think of it as starting here and having its head over here. Now I've got uh, R1, negative R1 plus R2. And the sum of those two vectors is the vector that starts at the tail of the first vector and goes to the head of the last vector. So we see that delta R is in fact R2 minus R1.
And when we do our use our unit vector notation, we're going to align uh, our x, y, and z uh, components of each vector, and we're going to take the difference of the x components, the difference of the y components, and the difference of the z components to get our answer for delta r. Let's look at an example. All right, so let's use the same coordinates for our initial position that we had before, negative 3, 2, 5. And we're going to move from that position in space to our new position in space, R2, which is described by the coordinates 9 in the x, 2 in the y, and 8 in the z. So we're going to subtract one from the other. Our R2 minus R1 will be our delta R vector. And so remember, R2 minus R1 is the same as R2 plus negative R1. So all I have to do is change the sign of R1, change the sign of every term, and then I can just add them up. And I see that when I add those two together now, I get 12 in the X and 3 in the Z. Uh, these two add to zero, so I have no J component. What does that mean? Well, it means that this vector delta R is going to have no change in its Y position. So that means this delta R vector is going to be parallel to the ZX plane. And its position is described as 12 in the X and 3 in the K. If I were to move this delta R vector so that its tail was at the origin, then the head of that vector would be at the position 12, 0, 3. This is a toy you've probably seen before, an Etch-a-Sketch. Uh, you turn one knob and it draws horizontally. I've labeled that with X. And you turn the other knob and it draws vertically, and I've labeled that Y. So this X motion, I could describe that with an equation. However it was moving, I could describe that X position as a function of time and describe it with an equation. Same thing for the Y direction. I could describe the movement of the position in the Y with some equation, Y as a function of time. And if they were both moving at the same time, I could use those two equations to describe that motion. Let's look at another example. This device is similar to the Etch-a-Sketch. It has both a control for the X direction and one for the Y direction. We could set up an equation for the X and an equation for the Y, both as functions of time that describe the motion in the X and the motion in the Y. And you can see together, both motion in the X and the Y cause that centerpiece to move anywhere it wants to in two dimensions. Let's take a look at sample problem 4-2. A rabbit is running around on a field, and we've placed a coordinate system on that field so that we can uh, look at where the rabbit is at any pr particular time uh, in terms of X and Y coordinates. And uh, just like with the Etch-a-Sketch and the uh, servo motors that we just saw, the rabbit's position can be expressed as a function of what's called parametric equations. We see that x is a function of time and y is a function of time, and together it will give us the x and y coordinates of the rabbit's position at any time t. So the sample problem 4.2 asks us to find uh, the position vector r at time equals 15 seconds in both unit vector notation and in magnitude angle notation. So at time equals 15 seconds, we take our set of parametric equations and we plug in 15 for t for both equations. So the x equation, when I plug in 15, I get 66. And the y equation, when I plug in 15, I get minus 57. So here we can see on the graph, the x position is 66 and the y position is minus 57. So those are my x, y coordinates, and that's where the rabbit is located. And here's the position vector that describes that uh, location from the origin to that x, y coordinate. So our answer in unit vector notation then for r is 66 in the x and minus 57 in the y.
for magnitude angle notation, we're going to take the magnitude of this vector and describe its direction with an angle. So uh, here's a right triangle that has legs of 66 and minus 57. So using Pythagorean theorem, we solve uh, for the hypotenuse, which is, of course, the, R, the magnitude of the R vector. So it is 87 meters. And the angle that describes its direction, uh, we'll use this angle right in here. And so I take the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. So that's negative 57 over positive 56. And my calculator tells me that is negative 41 degrees. So this angle right here is negative 41 degrees. And that describes the position of the rabbit, 87 meters at an angle of negative 41 degrees. An important thing to keep in mind when you take the inverse tangent, uh, your calculator is always going to give you an answer in this region right here, between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. So somewhere on this red graph here in the center uh, is the answer your calculator is going to give you. What if your angle is actually something else that is not between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. This is where you have to make a decision. Your calculator cannot tell you this. You have to figure it out yourself. You have to look at the X and Y components of your R vector, right? When your R vector is in unit vector notation, there will be a sign, either plus or minus on the X and a sign of either plus or minus on the Y term. And so you have to figure out which quadrant your R vector points into. Here's an example of a third quadrant, fourth quadrant, first quadrant, and second quadrant. And you can see that for those four different quadrants, you have four different combinations of possibilities for plus and minus on your X and Y uh, components. So uh, double check when you take the inverse tangent, you will get an answer between negative 90 and 90 degrees. And then take a look at your uh, components. If they are not in the first or fourth quadrant, then you need to add uh, 180 degrees to your answer from your calculator to put your final answer in the second or third quadrant.